Alright sports fans, welcome back to the Charger project. As I hope we'll be able to see, we have made some progress on building the power stage for our um, high power charger project. So, what I have done is to take some 6mm polycarbonate sheet, which I've cut out, and I've used that to mount my two bulk capacitors and then attach this to the heatsink by way of some 8mm threaded bar some nuts and uh, just basic fixings now <clears throat> we're doing a few things quite differently here on this build and probably the one that I'm <laughs> the least comfortable with broadly is that I'm not going to be using a lot of um, or I should say I'm not going to be using large electrolytic bulk uh, cap capacitors in this particular build instead I'm going to try using these uh, much smaller film capacitors now these uh, two units um, are rated at I believe 600 volts DC uh, 200 microfarads and I believe 100 amps RMS ripple current rating so we're using one here as the bulk capacitor for our PFC stage and the second one has the bulk capacitor for our bulk stage. Now we do have uh, a series of these Arcatronics MKP 10 microfarad caps. Uh, we have three of them and they're arrayed throughout the uh, power stage. The first one here is connected directly across the bridge rectifier DC terminals. The second one connects across uh, C1 E2 on our book IGBT T and the third one between uh, ground and our inductor output uh, on our book stage and obviously up top here in our uh, kind of modern art sculpture we have our PFC inductor and our book inductor. So uh, everything else we got pretty much wired up in there and we have some sensing wires for sensing voltage and two more here uh, for sensing the book stage current. A lot of interconnections going on in there um, pretty much um, as per the uh, EMW layout but just done with uh, wiring and crimp, crimp terminals onto the bolt tags both on the IGBTs and on the um, bulk uh, film capacitors. So we've also got, what else have we got here? Yeah I've got a 100k 5 watt resistor just as a bleed down resistor on this capacitor and I need to get another one for this capacitor here. Now <clears throat> ultimately the design of this charger is quite experimental it may or may not work but the aim is to make this as small as possible but as high power density as I can get Hence, that's why I've looked at using the potting compound as a interf interface between the liquid cooled heatsink and the inductors. I've absolutely no idea whether that's going to work or not. Uh, I have deliberately left some of the windings exposed here on the two because I want to be able to do a temperature test on them. And if we do look good, then I can just build this up to the, uh, I can just build that up right up to the uh, clamp down plates here. 
Now, <clears throat> uh, someone did suggest on one of the forums, or did kind of query why I was using, I suppose, so much potting compound and why I didn't just, uh, you know, make some kind of a, a fo uh, former that would, you know, be a uh, tighter fit around the coils and have to use less of this goo. And that's a fair, uh, that's a fair point. My reasoning is, again, don't know whether this is, this is going to turn out uh, factual, but my theory being that the more connection that I get, the more surface area that I get to thermally bond the inductors to the heatsink, the better. Whereas if I'd had a very tight fitting core just around each of these and, you know, maybe two or three mil clearance, I would then have only had a very small thermal interface uh, between the heatsink and the inductor. Again, not sure whether there is any credence to that, uh, but testing will tell the tale. So that's where we're at with our hardware uh, build. So what we've been doing then has been building some of the control PCBs. Uh, <clears throat> not least of which is the um, driver board. Now this particular driver board I believe is the V13 and it incorporates the PFC uh, control chip and driver and feedback circuitry uh, kind of on the top two thirds of this board here and on the bottom end we have the simple IGBT driver uh, for our book stage. Uh, both of these drivers are based on the HCPL uh, 3120 gate drive opto coupler chip. <clears throat> the PFC is based on an IR1153 I believe um, is a little SO8 surface mount part. Um, no need to be afraid of that. It's quite it's quite easy to solder. Um, so we got that board built. So this will be installed uh, approximately. Let me see here. Uh, approximately here, um, and so we'll connect to the. Booster IGBT, uh, or sorry, the booster, yeah, IGBT uh, for the PFC, which will connect here, and the book stage IGBT, which will connect here onto these uh, terminals. And the unused side of the half bridge, uh, you probably won't be able to see it, but if I just put my finger in there, it might be obvious that there's a shorting link um, between the unused uh, sides of the half bridge modules. Uh, some people have you know commented about using negative gate drive to ensure that the devices would stay shut off. I've never tried it. Uh, I think it would in probably involve more problems so I prefer just to use a little bit of solid core wire just uh, soldered between the gate and the Kelvin emitter. And, uh, so far I haven't blown up any of them but that's not to say that we're not going to. Now the design of this charger uh, as per you might be able to see the three brown 10 square cables um, is I want to be able to use it uh, as both a three phase uh, non PFC uh, charger and a single phase PFC charger. So how are we going to achieve that? Well <clears throat> presently we're not really set up for it from a point of view of the voltages on the capacitors but that can be changed reasonably simply but my working theory on how I want to achieve that is as follows. Now I've got to apologize as my printer is uh, printer is looking for a, um, what's the word, a drum, and I uh, haven't provided it with one, so 
kind of hope this circuit diagram comes out. So this is uh, again just from EMW. Uh, this is a V12 um, power stage uh, circuit diagram. So, <coughs> excuse me. So if we have a look here at our mains input on, on this diagram, we will see that there is a single phase bridge r r rectifier. Now we have gone ahead and substituted a three phase uh, part in there, in there, which will of course work uh, perfectly fine on single phase with just a uh, neutral and uh, live giving us uh, 230 volts AC. <clears throat> so if we look at our booster stage uh, PFC now, obviously we're uh, sensing the mains voltage here and we have some uh, capacitance going on and then we come into our inductor and we come through that and then we have the you know kind of a classic booster converter design here now when we're using single phase obviously this transistor here will be switching uh, to boost the uh, bus voltage up to you know probably around 400 volts um, and to provide you know as close as possible to unity power factor uh, on our single phase feed and that then obviously passes on through that into the buck circuit and you know the rest is fairly straightforward I'm not going to get into that now but my working theory is that that's perfectly fine for, as I say, to 30 volts single phase. Now, <clears throat> again, leaving the component ratings aside just for a second, if we come in here and we apply 400 volts three phase, well then we're going to come up with a DC bus here of around about 580, you know, 600 volts DC. Now, what I propose doing under those conditions is to just leave this booster IGBT off. So I need to work out a method uh, to disable the um, the booster IGBT uh, when we're running with three phase input. So what happens? then is that our you know let's for the sake of simplicity call it 600 volts um, will simply pass through the inductor it will see it as being just a just a piece of wire um, and it will then pass through our diode here and continue on into the buck circuit um, obviously we will have no PFC on that three phase, but that's not so much of a problem uh, on three phase power as it is on single phase. So we will see if that works. Um, kind of hope it does, but we'll be starting off with basic single phase. So that's uh, another part of what we're trying to do and, and achieve. So the last uh, piece of the puzzle then that we've also built up oops, sorry, is our uh, logic board stroke control board uh, which has our screen um, and some push buttons on there for controlling uh, the various menus and various functions uh, of the charger. Uh, so we've got these We've got these two cards built, so the next real uh, step for me with this des design is to connect the uh, driver board, uh, connect the uh, sensing circuitry for the uh, mains voltage and booster current and that to this card, and, th and then uh, completely separately from the charger functionality on the con control board we should be able to fire up the, the PFC and check that we're getting um, 
you know, whatever the desired uh, bus voltage is, and then continue on building up towards our uh, boost bulk charger. A few, a few other things become ap apparent while we get into this uh, design stage is that we'll be able to do some neat stuff. Uh, the first being that it may we may have a requirement, particularly with the Renault battery on the way, to charge at much higher than um, we can presently. Presently, with just a non-PFC charger, with just a buck stage, we can't really go much above 260, 270 volts um, and hope to have any kind of control over it. So with the Renault, uh, we know we may be charging up to nearly 400 volts. So we're going to have to be doing some interesting things with the uh, PFC. So that is about it, folks, on our charger update. Uh, sorry for the rambling. Um, I guess I'm just not one of these people that likes making three minute videos where I kind of go jumping around uh, at warp speed in front of a camera. Um, plenty of those out there. So, yeah, that's it. We're going to get this driver board on here. Going to get these sensing cables hooked up and uh, we'll be coming back. Uh, maybe even with a very tentative power up of our... PFC stage. So that's about it folks. Um, thanks for watching and don't forget to tune back in.